All right, so this Honda Quadra Cut system, I'll go slow because it's dark, was given to me today by a really nice guy, and uh, he says it has a bent crankshaft. I looked underneath, uh, all of the stuff is taken off the crankshaft, so it's ready to be repaired. And in one second, we'll go over to the bench and I'll show you what he's taken off, which is actually quite a bit of work. So here's the uh, clutch. It looks like it, it holds through the spring onto the crankshaft that way. And then the two quadra cut blades are right here. So it's hopefully it's all there, and uh, if I can get that crankshaft straightened, I'm going to fix it. It's fully loaded. Double blade cutting system, clutch drive for the blades, uh, rear wheel drive on the, uh, on the uh, self-propel. Uh, nice control on the handle. This is the first time I've seen one of these. You guys that deal with newer machines would know that. Uh, this is the blade clutch. Very nice. Throttle. Bunny rabbit. Right? The whole bit. It really is a very nice lawnmower, but it's got a bent crankshaft. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the oil out of this guy. I've already drained the fuel out. And then we can work on them sideways, upside down, or whatever we want. Okay, we'll just put the dipstick back in here. And now we're going to bring the knee pads down. We're going to see what we can do. Turner. So when I measured this, this crankshaft was three eighths of an inch out. I'm just washing the car. I'm trying to do two things at once. So let's go back to the top. You can see it, eh? I think that's the best place to start right there. I'm just going to give it a whack. Let's go get my goggles on. My car will be ready soon, so we'll be changing subjects. There it is. Okay, I am just going to give this a whack. Right there. With a good size, what is that? Two pound hammer? Made in Canada. Okay, here we go. I got glasses on. Missed it. Missed it again. Not good for the socket. See if we did any damage. Still standing straight up. Oh yeah. We took, you know what, we took 3 16 out of there. Let's see how it rotates now. Without hardly any, okay, now there's hardly any binding, right? That's cool. I don't want to bang up my socket any more than this. Ah, oh, Papa son, but I do. I might have something that works better. You used to get one of these with every crappy socket set, right? Yeah. I'll probably never get it off. <laughs> Are you with me? Goggles back on. Gloves back on. This is not good, good procedure, but hey, it's broken before I started, right? Now well, let's measure. Let's see if we got any wobbles left. Quite a bit, eh? But it's not binding anymore. That's the highest spot right there. Should I keep it up? Absolutely. 
going to get a bigger stick. This is one of the fans, or one of the stars, I should say, of tools that don't need fuel. I'm going to get right behind this. And we're going to give it a good one. Okay. Now that should have helped. Still pretty bad. Hmm. We can't hurt it. It's already broken. Okay. That was a good one. Now, it spins now. I almost want to hit it directly. Right? It's without the socket on there. That's getting kind of scary. Still pretty bad. Can I go this way? Too much chance of a slip. Ah, hit the long one. Okay. If that doesn't do it, <laughs> I do this to myself every damn day. Eh? not going anymore. It's probably just bouncing on the uh, on the seal and the bottom counterweight. Wow. I'm not going to get it. Okay, time for a little break. Hey guys. Nice throttle cable. Okay, now I'm going to take off the rewind. I'm not sure which way to do it. We'll go the basic route first and just disconnect it from up there. So now I think our engine's disconnected. And from underneath, I think it is too. So let's give you a different perspective. Good. So you guys can see in there now. There is, I'm going to take you to the other side. You can look over this left shoulder. All I want to do is take this engine off the stand, off the body. And it looks like, to me, there's one, two, three, four, thir 12 or 13 millimeter bolts. Beauty. One, two, three, and the last one is is going to be the where the tension is, right? Okay, one more to go, and this should fall out, literally. Yep. Did you see it shift? Okay, I'm going to just grab it and take it to the bench. There. So we only really had to disconnect that one line, eh? which would be this one. There, now we got a, a carcass. Maybe, we don't know yet.
fuel line. Good. Rewind. Let's get a pail for parts. One. Pull this off. Hey, do you think we can pull this off? Alright, now our objective here is to get this crankshaft out of here, right? That's, that's probably a 19 millimeter. Need some air. Now, being as this engine has a bent crankshaft, right? This this flywheel key may be sheared. Doesn't seem to be. Okay, let's see if we can get that off of there. With a, uh, I'm going to start with a with my brass hammer. I'm going to probably end up using a flywheel remover. Oh, let's get that uh, coil off of there first. One of the coil studs is high for the rewind. And one is just low. Good. I'm going to just oh, we'll throw those in there. As I get the plug out too, so we can turn it over easier. See the plug right there? Just barely. Eh? Hey, these are easier to work on upside down. Oh, I gotta take this flywheel off of here, that's for sure. Okay, I'm trying to uh, take this flywheel cover off, right here. You ready? That was not, that wasn't a fluke. But I might have buggered up the threads a little bit on that uh, 19, eh? Put a nut on there to protect the to protect the end of the shaft. Good. So the parts are piling up. So that upper seal is good. Now this is how I remove the keys. Could be a good way. Could be a bad way. Doesn't matter. So now we have the top end of this ready to be pulled out. Time to turn this over. I might take these two other studs out of here. So I can turn it right over. Good. I think I can pull this apart. And that is on that side. This is the only other thing connecting it up. Yes, I'm going to have to take... Can I do that? The spring is easy. And the throttle arm is not so easy. I'll just take this cover off of here to get those bolts off of the uh, 
intake assembly. And we, I'm just trying to disconnect the carburetor linkage off of here. Eh? There we go. Now, did the carburetor come with it? Yes, it did. So we might as well disconnect that now too and give it a clean while we have it off. Okay, now do you see this here? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bolts holding this crankcase on. And this will start in here. And the beautiful thing about stuff that's never been taken apart before is it's usually been torqued to the right specification. So then over here, to get the bottom sump off, because this is a, an angled split crankcase, you see right here, it's split at an angle, so we have to, it, it's just a bit more hassle to get everything apart. So there, there, and then over here. Three. Can you see that one? Yes. And four. We might have to use a wrench on that one. Yes, we will. Here we go. Yeah, that helps a little bit. So our goal here is to get this crankshaft out of here. So they have overhead valves, but all of that is happening in the upper portion of the block. So what I'm hoping is to get, now that I've taken all the bolts off the sump, I'm hoping to tap this off, pull it off the shaft, and we should be able to get this crankshaft out of here without getting a hernia. Okay, so brass hammer. Maybe not. Maybe not. It's like a detective. I'm going to crack a case. Okay, I did, I did get it. I took my screwdriver, I stuck it in that little lip right there, right? And I just tapped it, and you can see now, if I twist that, hang on, I'm holding the camera in my one arm and my tongue stuck out. Can you see the slack coming there now, and the oil coming out? Good, eh? Just all that is is a Honda bond. They don't use a gasket on these guys, eh? Good. Metal timing gear. Not most of the oil out. That's pretty cool. A tin. There we go. The uh, crankshaft bolts. Just need to set this up on something a little more secure. And it's that top dead center right now. So we should, after we uh, disconnect those bolts, I can turn it back to there and just get those out of there. Yeah. 
you with me guys? I'm gonna I'm gonna try and use this to get this uh, crank uh, rod caps off of here. Oh yeah! Thank God for twerking, right? Now we push it back up to top dead center. And then we turn this back down and we should be able to get this crankshaft out of here. Like that. So I might have to build a little thing to show you how bent it is. We got it out and that's really cool. Hello my friends, let me just improve the lighting a little bit. You either improve the, less, the lighting with more lighting or less lighting, right? It's a little bit less sunlight I think. There. Okay, here's the crankshaft, right? This end is a little thicker than this end, so we will measure that. I'm using millimeters right now, it does not matter. So this thicker end of the shaft is 28, whoop, just a minute please. Just, yeah, 28, 2.8 centimeters, or 28 mils. The narrower part of this shaft, right there, on the other end, is 25.5. So that, yeah, 2.6 millimeters difference in here. But if I'm going to put a shim, you have to divide that in two because it's, it's you're only going to bring it up uh, half that. Can you see? So now it's within one millimeter of being level. Where are we? Let's just bring you in and we'll give you a little explanation. This is a jack press. This jack brings this assembly down and touches on here. Right now this is dead eye level. When I spin this, okay, from the low to the high, I'll tell you what my measurement is. I want to verify it in my head. So high measurement, we'll bring this forward a little bit. It's a heavy piece. And don't forget, we're bending. This isn't this isn't machining 101, this is Bruce Pender 101. Okay, zero. So on the high measurement. It's hard to do guys. Especially with the camera on. Okay, that's the distance between the table and the, and the unit right there. 61.4, and now we lower it. We take another measurement. We're going to bend it a bit. 59.5. So this is this shaft is bent five millimeters out. I want to be able to push that on here so that this end bends. But really, the whole thing is bent, right? So if I'm pushing from underneath, I'm going to go up. Yeah, that's right. Let's find out. It's already broken, right? All right, I'm going to push down on, on this lobe, which is like pushing back on this one, which is exactly what I want to do. So I'm just going to, just going to give it a couple. We'll see if we're actually bending it. I can probably feel it here. I wonder how far I should go. Twice as far as I probably think I should, right? Don't forget, metal wants to go back to where it was. I'm just going to try that for now. See if we can see any flexing in the lobes right here. Okay, so this is my way to test it now. I go back to here and to here. We bring it out and we, uh, we check high and low on the end of the shaft. I'll go right up against here. 
Good. And that says 62.2. Now we rotate it because this side and this side are level now, right? I need four fingers. 62.3. Two. 62.0. So we're close. I'm going to do it again. So there's way more leverage on this side than we have on that side, right? I want to see how much difference there is between the lows. Yes, it's touching here, but not here. Yeah, I wish I could. I wish I could stick something in there and feel feel how close it is. Right? This is fun 101, guys. Ooh, well, that's good. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna leave that in there. And we're just going to come down and see if I pinch it. Okay, I'm going to take this pressure off. I might have gone too far, right? Right on. So anyway, I'm going to keep on the same plan until I get zero difference between the high and the low. All right, let's give this a measure. I've been, I actually went too far with it, eh? So I came up, but brought it back just a tad. So this is with the lobes up on the crankshaft right there. Can you see the lobes are up, not down? We're going to measure this to this flange on this side, not here. We, we just flatten this out and push it down. Seventy-six point five. Then we turn it over, and we're using. Doesn't matter what we're using, as long as the measurement's close, right? Okay, here we go. Right there. I don't think I can do any better than that. Seventy-six point five. So, my friends, after all that beating and banging and jacking and pushing and hammering. This end is still, well both ends actually, right, because it's lopsided, is still three-eighths of an inch difference from the up to the down. It was so badly bent that I uh, went and had a look at the case, and the case has actually got hundreds of little minute cracks where the shaft goes through. Alright, now if you can get right in there and have a look, look at that. And this is the bottom. This is the sump where all of the damage hit, right? So it must have really done quite a bit to crack that up. I would not trust that engine in anything. Pretty tough stuff though, right? So yes, I parted it out. But, <laughs> I got a GCV 160 carb. Well, you know, Honda 160 carb. Uh, coil. Um, all the rewinds and stuff that you can dream of. The wheels, right? Because the wheels have that plastic gear. They're out, they're out there now. But they have that nice plastic gear right on the tire. And the transmission is still in the deck. I, uh, I have to go take that out before I take the deck to the dump. Because I don't think there's a heck of a lot of hours on this machine, but that last incident uh, torch the motor. So thank you once again for watching. Bye.